Now welcome to unit D, which will be about the Kalman filter. Let's first have a look what we will cover in this unit. Now if you remember, in unit B we had the following. We used our motor ticks and a motion model to determine the robot's position at any point in time. And the result looked like that. It was a pretty smooth trajectory, but on the other hand, it led to a position that was globally wrong. If we compared that to the reference position, which we obtained by using an additional overhead camera. So in order to fix this, we used the matching of the landmarks in the scene. And the result of this looked as follows. So we had here, on the right hand side, the detected cylinders in the scanner's coordinate system, which we transformed into our world coordinate system and then matched them to the known positions of the landmarks in our scene. And for matching, we used the similarity transform, for which at least two corresponding landmarks are required. So in the end, we obtained a globally good position, whereas if you look at the detail, the trajectory looks very jagged. So overall, there were two drawbacks. First of all, if we have only one landmark in our view, then we can't apply our method because we need at least two landmarks because that gives us four observation equations which enable us to estimate the four parameters of the transformation. And the other drawback was that all the noise in the measurement of our landmarks also affects our position and so in the end we get a very noisy position which results in this non-smooth trajectory. And now, with what you learn today, you will be able to produce a trajectory like that using a Kalman filter. So what you see here is a trajectory that is, on the one hand, pretty smooth, and on the other hand, globally correct. And what you also see is that at any point in time, the robot maintains an uncertainty about its position, which is expressed in this error ellipse, and also an uncertainty in heading, which you can see here as a small triangle, which gives the plus minus one sigma angle for the heading. And so as we move along the trajectory, you see that the noise in the measurements does not strongly affect the trajectory. And you can also see, for example here, that as we move along and we got fewer and fewer points to match, now in this case only one, our uncertainty in position and heading is growing. And also that the filter is able to improve the position of our robot even if we have only one matching pole available. So in contrast to our previous solution, which used the estimation of a similarity transform, the Kalman filter does not need at least two matching poles. And in fact, here is the solution which is obtained if I disallow the Kalman filter to use more than one match. So even if I allow the Kalman filter to only use this one matching pole, in this case this one, and then somehow arbitrarily this one, I will get a trajectory that is globally good, although it looks a little bit more jagged than the trajectory that is obtained if the filter is allowed to use all potential matches. So the uncertainty of my position will grow as it is expressed by this larger error ellipse, but still it is astounding how smooth the trajectory is in general, except in this case here. So now let's see how this Kalman filtering works. 